Hello, I'm Alice Lanyardo at The Voice of Russia in London. If you're longing to find a new translation of Crime and Punishment, or just want to catch up with the latest in underground Russian poetry, you need to get to London's new Russian bookshop. Waterstones, which was bought by Russian billionaire Alexander Mamut last year, has just opened a Russian shop within its flagship Piccadilly store. We invited Waterstones' head of operations, Neil Best, and bookseller, Masha Padziwe, into our studio to talk about this new mecca for Russophiles. I started by asking Neil why Waterstones has decided that this is the moment to open a Russian bookshop in London. I mean, it'll come to no surprise to you that we're under Russian ownership, so of course that has a little bit to do with it. But moving beyond that, James is obviously, James Dolans is a great Russophile, as am I, and we, in discussions with Alexander, had seen the potential for a Russian bookshop for some time. There's 400,000 Russian speakers in the UK, 100,000 in London. So clearly there's a market that's not been tapped into there, and, and that's the reason for doing it now. That's what I was going to ask about. Did, did you do specific market research to yeah. find out? I'd really like to know what your findings were. Well, I can, I'm happy to share with, with you in more detail, but obviously you can break it down into a very transient working population, um, which we felt were quite well catered for in places like Roskomir. And then there's the traditional market here for Russian learning with people like Collins and Grant and Cutler. But just looking around in central London, there didn't seem to be a bookshop for that was a fair expression, I suppose, of Russian culture, a proper literary Russian bookshop, as Waterstones would be as an English bookshop. And Masha Padzire, you're a bookseller at the Waterstones Russian department. What are you excited about selling to your new customers? Well, we've got a really wide range of literature, but also we are very lucky with our suppliers because they handpicked a beautiful selection of very contemporary and um, very diverse literature for us to sell. And the novels that we have are new. Some books are published in 2012, so it's just off the print. We have new Pilevin, new Petrushevska. We've got a lot, lot about Russian history, contemporary and old essays, memoirs, classics, you name it. And we're going to do recommends. We're going to write the recommends so everybody's welcome to come and have a read of what the novels are about. And what's the spread between Russian books in Russian and novels that are translated or written by non-Russian authors in English? We just got everything we could find that was ever translated and published that we could get our hands on in our translated fiction section so we can match the Russian titles with English titles because we have a huge interest from English public coming to buy, mm. you know, the lovers of Russian literature. They come and they want to find the equivalent of the Russian novel translated into English. So we're trying to have double titles, How one many in Russian and in English. How many titles do you have, roughly? We have about 5,000 titles in Russian. So we're going to try and get the same in, in English, but not everything has been translated. And Masha, do you think this started because... Did, did you have people coming in asking for Russian books? Absolutely, yes. And uh, there's a huge percent of population in London, people in London, who are Russians. And, you know, I used to work in, the, in a different shop before, and... Um, 10%, easily 10% of our customers every day were Russians. I spoke Russian every day in my shop. Neil, is this something your market research bore out, that there is an appetite? I mean, some people might be surprised because there is an online market. Some Russians go back home quite often sure. and buy books there. Did you find that there was an appetite, nevertheless, to buy real books in a real bookshop? Absolutely. And you only have to go around there. I'm sure you'll be around there soon. But if you go around there already, it's full of Russians looking at real books and buying real books. So uh, that market research is definitely borne out. That's essentially the same problem that any retailer faces these days. There's buying online and then there's being able to go into an environment where you can relax and talk to people with the same ideas and views and, and have a chat about it, talk to well-informed booksellers about it who can recommend things for you rather than just knowing already what you're looking for. So I think hopefully we're solving that problem of the excess baggage on flights to and from Moscow. And 
what about the choice of Piccadilly rather than in another of your stores? Yeah. It does seem to be becoming quite a Russian region round here, and I wondered if that was one of the reasons for your choice. Well, it is partly one of the reasons. I mean, we talked to Academia Roska, and obviously the Russian Film Club is based very locally. So, you know, when you've got a market here, and Maslanitsa Festival in Trafalgar Square at the weekend, so there's definitely a sense that the centre of London is a, is a place where there are a lot of Russian people and a lot of Russian activity. It's also our flagship shop. So, you know, we wanted to make a bit of a statement about it. Now, Masha, some people say <coughs> that the newer Russian writers are not read or appreciated as much in the UK as they could be, that they haven't made as much of a splash yet as they should. Do you think this is the case? And, and if so, why might this be? Well, I'm glad you asked that because uh, this is the conversation that I've, I'm having every day with my new customers, you know, people who come and ask about the Russian shop. And so far... I'm going to be, it's not just my opinion, I'm going to be honest that loads of people kind of think that as well, that it's good that we're concentrated on the new authors because in the Russian book market, which is huge, and of course we can't represent all of it, they uh, get a little bit lost sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's really good to have them well represented and in one place so people can come and just browse and actually decide for themselves whether they like it or not rather than read somebody else's opinion about it. So people don't know where to look. I know when I was at university, I used to, I used to rely on the Glass Journal for yeah. yes. a window into Russian literature, but now there's so much more coming out. I think that because there are so many different portals and so much information on the internet, it could mm. be quite confusing for, um, you know, for the reader of the new authors to kind of decide whose opinion to listen to. But instead of listening to that opinion, you can just take a book from the shelf Come to, and so. read it and then you can decide for yourself or speak to a bookseller. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, just having, just to back up what Masha's saying, th there's a vast wealth of Russian publishing, not much of which gets translated, but if you look in the UK market, the popularity of people like Palyevin and Boris Kunin, for instance, who's just become a huge cult now, I think what we will try and do with this is have a shop window, not only for the public, but for publishers too, to say, look, there is a market for this stuff in the UK and there is a lot of interest in it. That's what's happened with Scandinavian fiction, for instance, over the last number of years, just by a slow build of having a few authors who do break through, suddenly there's a, a flood of interest and it's all over the TV and, ev and everywhere else and it's the biggest thing in the market at the minute. So we're hoping that in some little way we might be able to move Russian publishing and translation along and help out those brave people who've been at that sort of cold face for a long time. There is a perception sometimes that apart from people like Akunin and Pelyevin, some of modern Russian literature is quite sad and a lot mm. of the books I've read recently haven't been comedic. Do you think that puts people off? Do you think that's a perception in the British mind or is that changing? Well, I, I mean, you know, this bookshop is, uh, is a project about kind of cross-cultural relations, if you like. So hopefully, if that perception of the Russian mindset as slightly introverted and miserable is, does exist there, and it inevitably is reflected to an extent in, in writing, but it is a bit of a cliche, I think. And if we can entice British publishers and, and readers to, to just take that step... I think that this provides the best opportunity to do so. People said this exactly the same thing about Scandinavians, by the way, for a long time, suicide rates, etc. So, and, and now it's, it's a cult, isn't it? So hopefully we can, we can contribute strongly towards developing something similar here. The other thing I wanted to ask about, Masha, is that there does still remain a fascination with Russia among British writers, writers of fiction, non-fiction and, and so on. What do you attribute that to? Do you think that British writers are still thinking of a Russia that's, that's long gone or is it just something that's, that's in our history? How, how do you find when you have customers coming in and talking to you about the kind of books they want to read? Well, I think that, uh, uh, you know, that we have quite a lot of books that are very popular that are written by Russian and Ukrainian writers like Kurkov, like mm -hmm. Livetsky. Uh, um, and uh, uh, I think that the interest is growing, you know. I mean, look at the snowdrops. Yeah, I, know, I know it's set in Russia, but anything that has a motive is just progressively becoming more and more popular. It's, it's now in bestsellers, and this is kind of a new novelist writing. So I think people are less scared about mm. looking into these books and finding something really horrible. <laughs> I think the bit, the bit for me that was interesting about this project was that suddenly how many Russophiles came, uh, English Russophiles came out of the cupboards. So as soon as you start talking about it to English speakers who you wouldn't necessarily know, they go, oh, I, I love Russian history. I've got loads of books on Russian history. I'm interested in, in Russian art photography. I've just... 
I've got a book with me actually that I just bought by an English photographer who's travelled around Russia photographing decaying wooden churches. So there is this sort of thing there that's been opened up probably in the last 20 years where before that there was a particular image of Russia in, in the West, Western Europe which has suddenly changed and there is a lot more interest in other aspects of Russian history I suppose and, right, and literature. And is there a big markup on the books, Masha? Well, our books are quite cheap and very, very affordable. I mean, um, we are cheaper than the most of retailers of Russian books in London. And so what about retailers in Moscow, though? How do you compare with those? Well, we, we'll be more expensive than those because obviously we're we're we're. Um, shipping them here but we made a very conscious decision to be as honest as we possibly could about not trying to rip people off because that was one of the other things that in the market here there are hugely inflated prices in in some areas so I think we've been very honest I mean you'll see yourself when you look at it but of course a paperback in Moscow is going to cost less than it will here but uh, come and have a look and you'll see, you'll see if you get good value or not. Do you see your new shop as well as a hub for Russophiles in London? Are you going to have events there where writers going to give readings perhaps? Well, we're lucky in this weekend, Masha, do you want to let them know what the guys know about what's happening this uh, weekend? So we have Dmitry Bukov, who is very popular and he's a great poet and he's a cult figure. And rightly so, because he's extremely intelligent and interesting persona. So we're very lucky to have him in the shop signing his new book, Gerzdanian Poet, Citizen Poet. And then afterwards, uh, we'll be going on to his event. Can't remember where the event is. There's an event in central London. Yeah, the, central yeah, London. Yeah, he's got a gig on. So, so we'd get to see the cream of the crop, yeah. I think, the, of the Russian community there. And then, yeah, but, uh, we're hoping to get a lot of people on Saturday to see him. And yeah. what, what about future writers that you might be asking? Well, we, we, we want to build... So part of it, as I think I've referred to it before as a sort of cultural hub. So we want it to be a meeting place for Russian people. So there'll be... We're hoping to set up reading groups. We want to have lesser-known writers coming over. I was talking to someone from Snob yesterday about bringing over some fairly unknown Russian poets to perform and read. But also we'll work with organisations like Academia Roska to bring better-known authors over who might come have come and passed. To the, so that will be Yuri Kirchhoff's and Spadevans and Akunin's, which cater both for a Russian and an English audience. So we're quite happy to work with any Russian or Russophile organisation to set up a really strong, regular programme of events. And the benefit we have is that the space we're in in Piccadilly is m very multifunctional. We've other rooms that we can use, but also we can use the shop itself. Um, we want it to be a place where people come and sit and read and talk to each other, not a fusty old bookshop, but a kind of really live and kind of vibrant part of Russian culture in the capital. And, and that means having lots of exciting events going on there. So. I mean, we already have Pushkin House. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's room for something that crosses over perhaps a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I mean, and we'll obviously have conversations with Pushkin House about how we can uh, can collaborate on on making the most of it for the community because actually you know, it only works if, if we get customers it only get works if people like it and we were just talking before we came actually about about uh, the range and the stock and how we'll ask our customers what they do want and what they would like to see in there uh, and we'll shape the range that's in the stock based on that Lastly I'd like to ask you both to recommend us a book in English for our British listeners by Russian author Perhaps, Neil, I could start with you. Well, I've, I've just come from the shop with a book in my bag, so I, I have it in front of me, and you can see... Well, you can't see, of course, because you're on the radio, but this is a book I was referring to earlier by Richard Davies, which is an extraordinarily beautiful photographic book of uh, pictures of Russian wooden churches. He and his wife travelled around the frozen north for a decade, well, over a decade, and it's their life's work to kind of expose the condition that some of these churches are in and record them before they're lost really forever. So it's an absolutely exquisite book. Obviously got it in the shop, so do come and have a look. And Masha? I would like to add something to Neil's <laughs> as well. Actually, people look at the pictures in this book and they wonder, um, you know, what is so special about saving these churches? These churches are built without nails. This is the top carpentry you'll ever see in your life. So come and take a look at that book. It's really fascinating. OK, I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to go with a, a choice. My choice would be um, Yegor Letov's new poems. Yegor Letov is the massive cult culture for 
kind of my generation in Russia and the generation before. He's a musician, a poet, and he's a leader of the underground youth movement that grew up, and now his books are in classics. So I would recommend that book. It's very countercultural, put it that way, and very brave and very beautiful. That was Neil Best and Masha Padziwe of Waterstones talking to me, Alice Lanyardo, at The Voice of Russia in London about their new Russian bookshop. You specific market research to yeah. find out. I'd really like to know what your findings were. Well, I can, I'm happy to share with, with you in more detail, but obviously you can break it down into a very transient working population, um, which we felt were quite well catered for in places like Ruskimir. And then there's the traditional market here for Russian learning with people like Collett and Grant and Cutler. But just looking around in central London, there didn't seem to be a bookshop for that was a fair expression, I suppose, of Russian culture, a proper literary Russian bookshop, as Waterstones would be as an English. I started by asking Neil why Waterstones has decided that this is the moment to open a Russian bookshop in London. I mean, it'll come to no surprise to you that we're under Russian ownership, so of course that has a little bit to do with it. But moving beyond that, James is obviously, James Dawns is a great Russophile, as am I, and we, in discussions with Alexander, had seen the potential for a Russian bookshop for some time. There's 400,000 Russian speakers in the UK, 100,000 in London. So clearly there's a market that's not been tapped into there, and, and that's the reason for doing it now. That's what I was going to ask about. Did, did you do bookshop? And Masha Padzire, you're a bookseller at the Waterstones Russian department. What are you excited about selling to your new customers? Well, we've got a really wide range of literature, but also we are very lucky with our suppliers because they handpicked a beautiful selection of very contemporary and um, very diverse literature for us to sell. And the novels that we have are new. Some books are published in 2012, so it's just off the print. We have new Pilevin, new Petrushevska. We've got a lot, a lot about Russian history, contemporary and old essays, memoirs, classics, you name it. And we're going to do recommends. We're going to write the recommends so everybody's welcome to come and have a read of what the novels are about. <laughs> and what's the spread between Russian books in Russian and novels that are translated or written by non-Russian authors in English? We just got everything we could find that was ever translated and published that we could get our hands on in our translated fiction section so we can match the Russian titles with English titles. Hello, I'm Alice Lanyardo at The Voice of Russia in London. If you're longing to find a new translation of Crime and Punishment or just want to catch up with the latest in underground Russian poetry, you need to get to London's new Russian bookshop. Waterstones, which was bought by Russian billionaire Alexander Mamut last year, has just opened a Russian shop within its flagship Piccadilly store. We invited Waterstones head of operations, Neil Best, and bookseller Masha Padziwe into our studio to talk about this new mecca for Russophiles. 